It is Wednesday, April 10th, 2024. This is another edition of Baseball Today. That is my man, Trevor Plouffe. I am Chris Rose, producer Dan, along for the ride as well. In about 48 hours, we are all going to be together in downtown Los Angeles. Boomtown Brewery, still a few general admission tickets left to the first ever live edition of Baseball Today. Go get them at shop.johnboymedia.com. Click on the link in the description. Can't wait to see you and give you a big old hug in person. I'm still flabbergasted that we live so close to each other, but the only time I ever see you is on the computer screen. So, yes, I do want to give your big old body a hug, a big bear a hug for you, C-Rose. Well, I'll be handing out a few of those to some of the you know the people that show up as well. Just a few bear hugs to go around. That's all. Uh, yeah, I hear you. By the way, hopefully there's less body for you to hug. Been getting down, trying to trim down a little bit. So you get look there. great, C-Rose. I'm yeah. going to instill you with confidence before you head out to the yeah. desert. That's the, yeah, <laughs> I need it. I need a little bit. Uh, you know, he's got plenty of confidence. Shay Langoliers, good for him providing us. That's why he's our tip of the cap today. Uh, first three homer game of the 2024 season and only the second by an A's catcher in franchise history, joining Hall of Famer Mickey Cochran, who did it for the Philadelphia A's in 1925. I love stuff like that. I did too. Huge tip of the cap because it took this Herculean effort for them to win the game. I believe they won it four to three. <laughs> yeah. And th- a three homer did uh, by Shea. And some of those were absolute tanks too. So that is, um, that's a hell of a day at the yard, C Rose. You're, you're feeling the effects of that for, for weeks to come. Did you ever have a three homer game like at any level, whether it was high school, minors? I definitely had one in high school. I, I remember that uh, pretty uh-huh. distinctly because I bunted my last at bat and people were kind of giving me a drag what? bunt to get the rally started, bro. We bunted so much at my school. like It was like a thing, uh-huh. a, a, a sense of pride, if you will. So I went left field, center field, and right field uh, homers, and then I drag bunted my last at bat. Drag I bunted from the right side? Yeah, I mean, down the third baseline. Yeah. Okay. Because usually drags for lefty and dragging it. You with don't know him. what you're talking about. That's true. That is true. <laughs> I do know what I'm talking about there. <laughs> Stop it. Well, am I pushing the bunt down to third base? No, I'm dragging the bunt. Dragging the bunt just means to going this way with it. Okay. All right. Push. I still have a I, whatever we're going to call it. How about just let our dude who's hit three bombs in the game hit a fourth tank? That'll get a rally going. I was selfless, Chris, but I don't. I don't think I ever did it at, at the professional level. I'm not sure. I don't think so. Many times, two homers, but not three. Three's okay. a, three's a lot. Got a lot to get to, and let's start with the fact that he is here. Baseball's top prospect, Jackson Holiday, will be making his major league debut Wednesday night, Fenway Park, against the Boston Red Sox for the Baltimore Orioles. Uh, Jeff Pass on the first to report it, and finally, the Orioles let the cat out of the bag that it is happening. Uh, Compared to other top prospects that we have seen over the last, let's say, 15 or 20 years, how excited are you to see Jackson Holiday? I mean, I'm really excited. Uh, I think that any time that we get to know someone before they get to the big leagues, it kind of ramps up the expectation a little bit. We've we've seen a lot of Jackson, and maybe it's uh, partly on me too because I follow him on Instagram, but I believe you know, he's been all over mm-hmm. MLB.com, MLB, not, MLB Network, and he's just been on everyone's radar because of his last name and because of what he's been able to do at such a young age at the minor league level. I mean, this guy looks completely ready. I love the Paul Skeens versus uh, Jackson matchup in spring training. Like anytime a spring training at bat becomes compelling, I think you got to pay attention. Um, but I will say this. I think it's great for baseball when we do this because love him or hate him or like, you know, whatever you expect out of him, either way, it's going to be compelling. Either way, this guy is going to come up and light the world on fire and we're going to say, hey, this is one of our future superstars or he's going to fail. And we're going to say, see, the big leagues is really hard and this guy needs a little bit more time. Like, I think. And, and I'm on the side. I want to see this guy uh, succeed. I want to make sure everyone knows that. Um, but I think it makes for good storytelling when you have uh, both sides uh, being options. Like, there's not. That's not for sure. He's going to come up and be a, a guy. Like, there he could absolutely struggle. Look at Grayson Rodriguez when he came up at the beginning of last year. Like, he struggled, got sent down, then came out, came back, and figured some things up. I think it's the same thing with like Caitlin Clark at the amateur level. People can't wait to see her go play in the WNBA because 
is she going to be really good like we think she is or is she going to get like stopped because she's quote unquote playing with grown women uh like that's so why I, I just love when this happens because either way it's it's entertaining i uh-huh. guess and that's kind of the way i'm looking at it right now like i know this guy's going to be a good big leaguer eventually like but i want to see how he does right away because i think there's definitely the chance it could go this or it could go this Mm -hmm. that's fair um two sides of story makes for an interesting story now as am i as excited as when bryce harper came up no uh mike trout no steven strasburg no. So hold on. Did you was that was there fanfare for Mike Trout? Because I remember when he came up, he struggled right, right away. Was was yeah, there like did. fanfare like that? I think there was fanfare from the standpoint that first of all, people couldn't believe that he actually signed. I think everybody in the world thought he was going to East Carolina, which is why he fell in the draft that year. And so he didn't have the shine that Harper does because of the personality difference, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just but I think there was certainly a little bit of that. Uh, he made it before Harper did. He came up in the back end of 2011, right, and played about 40 games or so. So you're right. There wasn't nearly the fanfare when Harper made his debut out at Dodger Stadium. I think it's been Harper and Strasburg, who are the two that I really remember coming up and being like, okay, I need to watch this. And I think part of the reason that I was so excited was because Washington was horseshit as a franchise. And so you knew that those two guys were going to be the cornerstones if they were ever going to turn the corner. Jackson Holiday is joining a team that just won a hundred freaking games. And and he's not immediately the difference maker on this team. There are two other young studs in Gunnar Henderson and Ashley uh Adley Rutschman who are already ahead of him and who are already kind of more of the face of the franchise than Jackson Holiday while he's coming in. And I actually think that's a great thing for Jackson Holiday. He can kind of blend in, he could hit seventh tonight, and nobody's gonna be like really like what's going on here like he's he's just kind of one of the dudes in this organization which i think is awesome for him yeah i think that that definitely helps out alleviate some of the pressure uh but it, it's there's still gonna be all eyes on him tonight no offense to gunner or adley like it's gonna be all eyes on jackson holiday so that's yeah. a lot of pressure to put on put on a young kid but you know you you just kind of like get the vibe off of guys uh, he seems like he's able to handle the pressure well. I mean, obviously that that has a lot to do with his dad bringing him around the game. He's familiar with he's familiar with this stuff, and that you can't say that. I mean, very few people, you know, get to have the experiences that that he did, and then make it to the big leagues. But don't you agree that the success or failure of the Baltimore Orioles getting to the next level is not solely on the shoulders of Jackson yeah. Holiday, whereas it has been. With Harper in Washington, Strasburg in Washington, Trout in Anaheim, to some degree Chris Bryant, although he also had young help on the north side of Chicago. I think the, all those guys are in different situations than Jackson Holiday is. He's coming into a much better situation, yes. Yeah. I can't wait. I'll be glued tonight. I'll be glued the next day. Where are day. they playing? They're at Fenway. Oof. Yeah. Fun. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm curious to see if he gets like any sort of ovation. I think I think you will because they're they are great. Say whatever you want about Boston fans; they're great baseball fans, and they're they're not. They're they are hilarious. Yeah, I'm sure they're right on you right there too. And a nice little uh, note that Billy Ripken dropped today on MLB Network that Jackson Holiday is going to wear number seven, which of course was the number that Cal Senior wore and had not been worn by the Orioles since the passing of a guy who made meant so much to that organization. So I think that is really, really nice that those families work that out behind the scenes. And he's going to get a chance to wear a number seven that Matt Holiday wore for so many years. Pretty cool. You know what else is cool? One of our boys at the Rose Rotation is going off. Tyler Glass now, a career-high 14 strikeouts and no walks in seven shutout innings against somebody's Minnesota Twins. He became the first player since they started tracking pitches in the late 80s to have at least 14 strikeouts with fewer than 90 pitches thrown. My question to you, is he the most important pitcher on the Dodgers staff this year? Uh, I don't really know how to answer the question. Uh, I think that 
he's one of the most important pitchers. They go, I mean, that's a big part of that team is, you know, making sure these starting pitchers stay healthy. Uh, I think you could say the same thing about uh, Bobby Miller, um, a Yamamoto, like very important to this team. If he's the most important. So I guess to answer your question, no, hmm. they're all kind of important to that team. Um, having him show up like this and seeing this from him. I mean, to me, that's important. You're talking about 14 K's. No walks. He toyed with Minnesota. And look, they're not off to a hot start with the bets or pitching. Uh, the bullpen's been about the only thing that's been pretty good for them. Uh, and they've had some injuries there as well. So it's it's just been a really for Minnesota. Uh, but he was dazzling. I, I don't care who was in the box there. You know, the seven Yankees, the Braves, who were just unbelievably offensive. We go check out all their numbers. If they were in the box, they weren't going to hit this guy. He was that good last night. And, you know, as Jeffers, Ryan Jeffers, the Twins catcher, said after the game, he's just been all of us. Let's tip your cap sometimes. I mean, he the first time through the order, just zipping fastballs by guys. Then he brought in the slide piece a little bit. Then he brings in the curveball at the end of the game. Then he rides the fastball up off of that. He just – he was firing on all, – with all of his pitches uh, and just pretty much locating wherever he wanted to. It was a masterful performance. If the Dodgers continue to get that out of him – it's going to be, I we we got to. I mean, people are going to hate that I say this, but we got to see Braves Dodgers match up in the playoffs. No, I don't think people are going to hate it. That would be well yes, if you do. obviously they if you're it. a fan of a team in the Central or the Phillies or one of the teams in the West that think they have a shot at the wild card. Yes, you're going to hate it. If you're just a baseball fan who loves watching the best compete, then yes. That would be a great NLCS. We have seen it a few times before. I think we would love to see it again. Let me answer this question. The answer is yes. He is the most important okay. for a few reasons. Okay. Number one, unlike Yamamoto, unlike Bobby Miller, unlike Walker Bueller, unlike Clayton Kershaw, the Dodgers traded something for Tyler Glass now. Okay. So they gave up a guy in Ryan Pepio who actually is off to a nice little start in Tampa, and a guy who the Dodger fans have been waiting on for years. So when you give up, you have to produce. The Dodgers then extended Tyler Glass now before he ever threw a pitch for them. I love Tyler Glass now, the player. I love him as a dude. He is he's a guy I don't consider a friend. But we have to speak facts as well. The facts are he's never thrown more than 120 innings in any season. And so it is important that he does that, that he gives them some innings when their, their rotation isn't totally stacked yet. And there are some question marks. This is the time where he has to grow up and be exactly who we think he can be. And I have no questions that he will. But that's what makes him the most important. I love it. Can I ask you a question real quick? Sure. Okay. Uh, the Braves uh, are leading the world in OPS as a team, 880, which is ridiculous. It's Dodgers insane. second, 811. You've seen the Dodgers offense, what they've been able to do. The Braves are 70 OP points ahead of them. Name the third team. The third team in OPS this year. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll give you five guesses and you're not going to get it. Really? God, that's so good. You're going to give me five guesses and I'm not going to get it. How about no. the uh, Kansas City Royals? No. Uh, the uh, uh, not the Seattle Mariners. No, uh, they've been atrocious. Uh, the San Diego Padres. No. The Chicago Cubs. Fourth. Okay. The um, uh, the Tampa Bay Rays. No. And the um, uh, the Washington Nationals. The Milwaukee Brewers. Oh, the, the Brew Milwaukee Crew. That away, Brew Crew. 807 oh, OPS. Good for them, man. They've, uh, You know what? We haven't talked about them. I think we're probably going to talk about them. Certainly, if they win on Wednesday, we'll get to them on Thursday's show, but we'll see. We'll see. All right. Nice stuff there. Uh, we got much more show coming your way, including a few really interesting comments. One from Trevor Storm, Rowdy Telez. But first, word from our friends at DraftKings. 
Yes, the show's brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. And guess what? It's officially time for fans to head to the ballpark and root for the home team as the baseball season gets underway. You got to get in on this action early in the season. Uh, DraftKings Sportsbook right now is offering all new customers who bet $5. You'll get $150 in bonus bets instantly. Just bet 5 bucks on any wager that's baseball-related. Uh, use the promo code BASEBALL today, and you'll get that $150 in bonus bets put right into your account. It's very easy. I think it's a good deal, so go check it out. Download the DraftKings Sports we got now. New customers, like I said, if you use the promo code BASEBALL today, you $5 on any wager, and you get $150 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code Baseball today only at the DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. And uh, while I was away, I want to thank Matthew Steen, who pointed out in the chat, I made a mistake. Bryce Harper had the first three of her game of the year. Shea Langoliers mm. had the first one in the American League. So thank you, Matthew. Gotcha. Thank you for keeping us on our toes. That is my fault. My fault. Error rose if you're scoring at home. Unfortunately, I think I lead the league in errors, so I got to work on. I got to get out there with Ron Washington. I think, I think I've done that too. <laughs> yeah, I've got to work on my early, uh, early fielding, something like that. Uh, unfortunately, dude, at some point, I just gonna start announcing when guys are healthy around Major League Baseball. I think that list might be shorter than guys are injured because every day, Fromberg went on the injured list. Same with Josiah Gray. He's got an arm issue. Arm issue for Nick Pavetta, who's off to an amazing start in Boston. And then to his teammate, Trevor Story. We saw him make five on their West Coast swing and injuring his injury for the year. Tough go for him. Listen to this. You know, missing last season, you you feel that. You know, you, you miss your teammates. You miss playing the game. Um You just know what it takes, you know. Oh. But I'll be all right. For those of you joining us audio only, that was the 12 seconds of silence, basically. Every story was trying to compose himself, but having a real difficult time. As a guy who played almost a decade in the major leagues, how does that make you feel? It's that's a tough watch, man. Uh, Trevor Story is 31 years old, so he's been playing baseball consecutively for 27 years now. It's it's as much of a part of you as anything else is, and you know it's a job, 100%. When you get into pro, ball, it's a job, but it's still your dream. Like you're living out your dream, and you want to be on a major league baseball field, playing with your boys for the fans. Of the and when that gets taken away with you, it's it's just it's daunting, man. Like I was, I've said this on the show before. A horrible rehab. Like pretty much the only time I've ever struggled mentally um, is when, when I'm on the aisle, and, and I couldn't do what I love to do. I couldn't be out there helping my team win ball games, and I couldn't be out there with. Like, it's just such a lonely feeling. Um, that 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 video that got me, man. Um, because I. I'm nowhere Trevor Story was. Um, you know, I don't know if I ever meant that much to my team, uh, but you just feel like you feel like garbage, man. You feel like you're letting the team down. You feel like you start to what could I have done different? Could I have done anything better? And all these emotions start to come pouring into you. And then you realize for a guy like him who missed last year, I miss a whole another year of baseball. And, like, I don't think he's going to rehab in Boston. So you're probably going to go down to Florida, this thing. And you're just going to be by yourself a lot. And that's where I got to, like, kind of a dark place. You feel like you're on an island and you feel useless. Like, your whole identity, really, as a baseball player is playing the game, being out there performing. And when that's taken away from you, you just feel useless. So, look, I know Trevor Story's got a bad. And, you know, he's set and, you know, there's a lot of people dealing with worse things. I get that. Um, but I know from experience just how lonely of a feeling it is. So that's that's what he's with. And I think right there you saw the actual realization of him being like, fuck, 
it's going to be a whole year before I'm back playing. And then there's the doubt. Am I ever going to be back healthy again? Even though you know you, there's light at the end of the tunnel, it's the tunnel split, man. It's it's difficult. Uh, well said. Uh, baseball is the most stats-driven sport in the history of the world. It's how we compare great players to one another. Um, here's a stat that Trevor Story was once proud of, and now probably it'll make his ears burn if he were to hear it. In Colorado, basically his five last full seasons, he played 92% of the games. In ball, this is now his third season since signing that big deal, he will have played less than 30% of the baseball game. And he was it, and it's it's got to be crushing him. It's got to be crushing him. Um, I, I'm under the comment, and I wanted to see what kind of Boston was feeling. And there were a lot of people who were sympathetic and talking about how tough it was to listen to Trevor's story and all that sort of stuff. And then there were some people who were saying, see, we should have invested in our own. We should have kept Xander Bogarts. We should have done all this. And that's the problem is that when you leave one day, like Denver, where he was born and raised in the base world and moved to another one. And this isn't finger pointing at Boston, because I think this would be equally true with every fan base there, that there are some people who are going to strictly see you as a number on the list. Oh, yeah. How much do you make? And, and I that tell him that people are just going to talk about a wasted $140 million contract instead of what he can provide as a leader and as a player to this team. And that's got to be just crushing for him. And I feel, yeah, no, that's a hundred percent. Like when you leave, you know, the organization that drafts you, you give up some of that just dude. It really is, you know, you have an onus to perform. Um, like, like you mentioned, he still has plenty of time. Look, he's got 25, 26, 27, a team option for 28. So we're talking four more years after this. I, he feels really alone right now. By the way, I know I've been checking out the chat here. We apologize. We need the Wi-Fi box today. It happens. It's not uh, anything we intended to do. Today, we're just having a bad technical day. Are we, are we on Nothing my we end? We're great, but we're, we're bad on the uh, live end. Okay. Well, get the office to clean and it up. Is this going to be good? Like and... when we put it on YouTube, or is it going to be the, the same as this? Okay. Sorry. Listen, the, here's the fact. The fact is, is that the feed, the visual's a little fuzzy. I can tell you this. It's like Michelle Rose wearing beer goggles. This is the best way I'm going to look is fuzzy. Oh my gosh. All right. So there you go. Let's move on to the first place Pirates. That is the good news. Despite losing a tough one at home, they had a 3 1 lead going into the ninth against the Tigers. Tigers explode for a four spot against the two time All Star closer, David Bednar. It has been a rough good guy who grew up in Pittsburgh, diehard Pirates and Steelers and Penguins fan. Um, really one of the good dudes in baseball, if you've gotten to know him over the years. Left yesterday before recording a third out in the ninth to a chorus of boost. Being the stand-up guy he is, he faced the media afterward, but there was one teammate who did pick up a save on Tuesday. That was Rowdy Telez. Uh, this is the pride of Pittsburgh to everybody. We don't do that out here. Uh, we're a good team. We're winning for a reason. Uh, we're going to get our man back on track, but what happened today is, uh, I think, unacceptable, and we as a group in Pittsburgh got to be better. It's an all-star for a reason. And um, we just have to be better. So that being said, two-time All-Star. Uh, was he re uh, I mean, yeah, I think that was a, a good move because all he's trying to do there is is pump his guy back up. Uh, you know, I know that he kind of, quote-unquote, took a, a shot at the fan base there telling him, hey, don't do that. Let's be better. I think what he was really trying to do, like I said, was just have his his boys back there. Mm. So if you're a Pittsburgh fan, you're like, don't tell us what to do. I don't think that was the intention there. You know, obviously he doesn't like the booing, and nobody likes to get booed. Um, I will say this: we've seen it all throughout the big leagues as of late, and and it, you want to do well. Pirates are in first place in three. Uh, one way to get your team to do well, team that confidence level when you go up there and you hear a roar from the crowd man 
that feels really good. And you feel good, you're going to play good. When you get booed by the crowd uh, just for performance stuff, that really hurts. Now, you, you boo for mental errors or you want to boo for not hustling. I'm in on that. Sometimes you need to be called out on stuff like that. But a guy like Bednar who does have a track record scuffling, uh, you know, at the beginning of the season, I don't, I don't want to tell you what to do with your hard-earned money because you paid to go so you can kind of, to a certain extent, do what you want. Uh, I would say you're better off cheering a guy in a situation like that because I know if you paid money to go to the game, you're a fan of the team and you want them to win. And I think when you get more performance out of the players is to is to cheer them on, especially when they're going through a low. Yeah, I the story before that John Sally and I used to have this disagreement on best damn 20 years ago. He's like, when we suck, like when we're trying but we stink, that's when we need fans the most. Yes. And I understood his point. Um, now, this was not a, a off for David Bednar. He, it's It's been a go for him. He has blown three of four yeah. save opportunities. Last year, he blew three save opportunities in 42 chances the entire year. The season before that, only four. As, even when this franchise has been struggling. Now, he's a big boy, and he understands the role, understands the job that he got. Uh, is usually see this out of Bednar. He's been better than that. At the same time, I'm okay with boo. I am now personally, would I have booed? No. I agree. I agree that the only times I would ever boo a guy is if I thought the effort was lacking or there's something lackadaisical. You just mentioned that. Not because of performance. Like would I be happy about it? No. Would I MF somebody if I'm watching the game on TV in front of my kid? Yeah. I do the time. Like not happy about it. I I'm a fan. I don't begrudge the fans for doing it. It's just not my style. I actually think that the fans were okay to do it. I think Rowdy Telez was a great teammate to do what he did. And I think David Bednar is going to stand there and be better for it when he comes back and hopefully is 100% healthy, if that's the, the problem here. I didn't have a problem with any yeah. of it. Really? I mean, like I said, like, if you really want the best from your team, like cheering a guy on when he's struggling – you know, moves mountains to a guy. All right. Royals, they've won five straight after Salvador Perez with a walk-off in extra innings. Again, Casey's now seven and four. Cleveland leads the Central. Detroit and Kansas City right there. The team that it all, Minnesota Twins, good, good talented team, just struggling the first two weeks of the year. How many legitimately – vie for the crown i think in this division i think early on what we're seeing i think there are four teams that could potentially win this division i'm going to keep my twins in there for now i know they look they look really bad chris not even it was runners in scoring position their hitting has just not showed up the pitching the starting pitching has been really bad but i do believe long to be okay uh, the royals have throwing the crap out of the ball. The Tigers have been kind of an all-around good team. And the Guardians somehow continue to win, uh, even though they're getting bad news on their ace. Um, you know, they don't even have their other guy that could potentially be an ace yet. Like, somehow they just continue to win uh, baseball games. And they're actually – they're kind of banging the ball around a little bit for a Guardians level, right? Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. Fair. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think we can – I think we're seeing from early on – legitimately four teams could be in this race. And I think that's good for baseball. And, you know, when we came into this year, we said, okay, it's going to be the twins. The tigers are the dark horse and the guardians are always there. The Royals are like, Hey, what about us? And they, and they actually had a really off season. If you remember, they made a bunch of moves uh, this off season to shore up the pitch staff. And that's, that's uh, been a huge part of what they've been doing right now. They are third in all of baseball in innings. Like that's, that's a stat that I like, Chris. Yeah. You know, if you're, if you're pitching that many innings, that's been, that means you're doing well. So um, I'll answer the question and say four. I really believe that now. Yeah, I think it could be the National League Central. Um, Singer and Lugo, both in ERA under one. Walk and Riggins under two, six, five, and March is just over three. Compare that to last year in Kansas City. They had eight play seven starts. Only one had an ERA under four, two. Only one guy, and that was Reagans, who came over in that midseason trade. Three guys who had the most starts on that team were Granky, Singer, and Lyles. 
none had an ERA under five. That was disastrous for that team. We know that they have got a star in the making in Bobby Witt Jr. They've got some other nice young players. MJ uh, Linda's been nasty. Yep, yep. Vinny at some point is going get, to get swinging it. So, yeah, I, th- I think that all four of those teams, the White Sox will see it down the road. But the other four will make it in, and then people will bitch and moan saying that there would be another team from the East or West that should make the playoffs and not a team from the Central, but that's for another time. Last thing real quickly, Tyler O'Neill with yet another home run in the Red Sox home opener. He does his thing. He blasts it over the monster, and then it ends up smashing somebody's windshield. If that was your ride, do you try to get something out of it from the Sox? Obviously. Uh, yeah, I want something. Unless you have a uh, safe light. What's that? Single safe light repair, safe light replace. Oh. Then you don't have to worry about it. Just call them up and they'll replace your windshield for free. I would, you know what I would do? Like, you know how, um, who was it? Was Elliot the Cruz hit a foul ball off Hunter Green and they, they took the window out and they signed it? Yes. That would be cool. Be great. Like, that's a cool piece of art to have in your house. Take the whole windshield out, have Tyler O'Neill sign it. Like, how unique is that to have? That's what yes. I would do. I would do that, and then I would also um, take my shirt off next to him and do the power flex as yep. well to see how I would compare next to him because I really wouldn't get a chance to do it anytime. It wouldn't be great for you, Chris. Have you seen the guy? He makes Chris. Wyatt Lang forearms look like little baby biceps. You know, um, don't don't underestimate this body. Do not do that. Oh, I see you. I see you with your ham hocks. That away. Still got it. Still putting the hand in the in the bucket of rice. Or that little mouse. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We will get things fixed for tomorrow. Here's the deal: we are not on live Thursday morning because we got people traveling to get out here for the live edition of um, baseball today on Friday. We're actually taping it tonight, and Jolly will be sitting in for Ploof. He's got a scheduling issue, but we're all going to be together either one or two shows on Friday. We're still working that out. So we might have a more, we might have like day night double header. That could be interesting. Uh, yep. Don't forget to go get your, get your tickets. Shop.johnboymedia.com. Still general admission seats out there. We want it Friday. We want to have a great for one of a kind producer, Dan Rourke and the uber talented Trevor Plouffe. I am Chris Rose. We will see you Thursday on baseball today.